back in the day when Photoshop was used for editing photos and not magicking shonky looking AI out of its arse, plugins were an essential way of extending the app's capabilities. Some of those plugins went on to enjoy a near legendary status. If names like Alien Skin Eye Candy, Flaming Pear and Kai's Power Tools ring a bell, then take a bow, you must be as old as me. But while other plugins faded into the mists of time, one 90s era pack managed to stay relevant and is still actively developed today. As the Nick plugins grew in number, they were collated together in a bundle called the Nick Collection. Now owned and actively developed by DxO, the latest point release version 7 has just gone on sale and I decided to put it through its paces. The question we need to ask is whether a plug-in suite like this still has a place in this AI-obsessed world of ours, or is it a dated concept that should be consigned to the pages of history? Yep, the Nick Collection's certainly been around the houses since its plugins were first released back in 1995. The suite was drunk shopped by Google in 2013 and unsurprisingly offloaded to DxO in 2017. This was a logical purchase for DxO. In an age of ever increasing automation and machine learning tools, the Nick Collection eschews anything as grubby as AI. Dear me, no. The kind of person that purchases the Nick collection is the polar opposite of someone who'd spank some hard currency on the table for Luminar Neo. In that sense, DxO is the perfect home for this suite because apart from the best denoising on the planet, DxO only do AI when it's absolutely essential. There are seven plugins in the Nick collection. Seven color effects, silver effects, analog effects, Viviza, Define, Sharpen, and HDR FX. This is one plugin down on the previous version. The Nick Perspective plugin has been ditched. But if perspective correction is important to you, you can continue using the one in version 6 or upgrade to the more advanced DxO viewpoint. All of the plugins have been given a bit of love by the backroom dev team with a focus, so say DxO, on improving speed and control. As to whether or not the Nick collection is something that will prove useful to your post-processing, that's another question entirely. Let's take a look at the suite, starting with the oldest kid on the block, and you can judge for yourself whether you need a bit of Nick in your life. There is a certain degree of overlap between the various plugins in the Nick collection, but color effects is arguably the most useful. It's best seen as a powerful color grading tool, an app that enables you to transform the look of your photograph entirely using an extremely comprehensive suite of individually configurable filters. Color FX has no less than 61 filters, in fact, which you can apply according to your own taste or by using one of the many pre-configured filter preset packs. If you're new to this software, then the presets are an excellent way of gaining an understanding of what's possible. Once you start poking around under the hood, you quickly realize that there is very little you can't accomplish in terms of look or color grade. Some of the filter options are familiar tools that you get in many photo editors, but others such as duplex, ink, and reflector FX are slightly more esoteric. Many of the filters emulate the effects you can create on location with your camera with a physical lens filter. Polarization and graduated neutral density, for instance. Color FX is a comprehensive editor with which you can recreate any existing look or create your own. You don't have to go crazy with it and channel an oversaturated nightmarish acid trip. Instead, with a light touch, you can add some special source to your photographs. The number of combinations of filters and configuration of those filters is pretty mind boggling once you start drilling down into those filter settings. And since you can now isolate each individual filter using control point, control line, polygonal and luminosity masks, you can target any tweaks to specific regions of the photograph. It's a monstrous plugin and probably worth the cost of the entire suite on its own if 
you are serious about your color grading. If you can't be bothered with all that tiresome slider action in color FX, and you want that old timey film look, then analog FX is your go-to. Filters hit the mainstream with apps like Instagram, but the quality and level of control you have in analog FX is a whole different league. Even better, it's possible to store your photograph in such a way that it looks properly authentic, and not just like you crank the saturation and clarity sliders all the way to the right, and then there's a little bit of grain. The filter incorporates a huge variety of reimagined cameras such as wet plate and toy cameras to different styles such as motion and double exposure. It's entirely possible to use those camera builds and not make your photo look cheesy, but the danger is always there. The built-in presets are broken down into categories such as multi-lens or vintage, and you can tweak every element of the sliders used to build those presets. Should you wish to start from scratch, then the camera kit enables you to roll your own filter look, adding bokeh, dirt, film type, lens distortion, and 10 other parameters into the mix. Obviously, the best way of getting that film look is by, you know, shooting with film, but these presets are a viable alternative and surprisingly useful if you do any commercial photography marketing or advertising work. Of all the plugins in the Nick collection, Viveza is the one I feel has the weakest of the use cases. It's a simple editor that enables you to tweak color and light through a series of basic sliders, the standard tools you'd find in literally any photo app. The sort of edits, in fact, that you'd undoubtedly do prior to outputting to a plugin. In this latest version of 7 release, DxO have added Viveza as a filter option within the more capable color effects, and this seems like a much more logical option than having it as its own full-blown app. It does have some decent presets that can be used to tweak color and light to emulate things like golden or blue hours, but it all seems a bit redundant to me. Silver FX, meanwhile, is most definitely not a redundant plugin. In fact, it's one of the best things about the whole Nick collection. On the face of it, converting the color image to black and white seems like a simple job. Simply flick to mono from color in Adobe Lightroom, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Black and white photos are not simply desaturated color ones. In order to convert an image properly into black and white, you need to account for luminous levels across the whole image, contrast, and tonal changes. To help get to grips with this, Silver FX emulates 20 well-known black and white films such as Neopan and Kodak Tri-X. Strangely, however, in order to make your own preset, you have to start with an existing one and then modify according to your taste. Images can be configured from seven slider tabs covering global and local adjustments, clear view, color filter, film type, grain, and finishing touches. Of these, the film type is the most fun, enabling you to choose from a comprehensive list of historic films to get precisely the look you want for your black and white shot. The plugin I most often use in the Nick collection is HDR FX. It gives me more control over HDR blends than something like Adobe Lightroom so I can get my blending shots looking right before post-processing. You can configure the image prior to blending using alignment, ghosting, chromatic aberration sliders and configure how over or underexposed you want the initial blend to be. After the images have been combined, there are 45 presets to choose from you can simply choose a flat profile and manage your own sliders. With full access to tone compression and strength, you can opt for a natural looking blend, or alternatively, the kind of overtoned images that gave HDR a bad name in the first place. Adobe Lightroom does a great job on 95% of my exposure blended images, but when I have problems, HDR FX has the tools to get the blend right. AI denoising is awesome, but there are times when you might prefer a more nuanced solution that doesn't change a photograph quite so dramatically. The Nick Define plugin is algorithm based, but it doesn't use machine learning. Instead, it is a wavelet noise reduction tool that uses spatial frequencies to remove matching noise areas from an image. Yeah, I had to look that up too. Turns out the technology behind this is similar to the popular frequency separation technique commonly used to retouch portraits. 
It worked by locating and targeting the ripples of noise without affecting the underlying image. This results in a cleaner image, more faithful to the original data than an AI denoised image would be. Does it remove as much noise as a good AI denoising app? No, definitely not. But there are times when you're happy to live with a bit of noise if it means being more faithful to the original image. I would imagine, for instance, that this kind of denoising would be preferred in a news gathering environment where image integrity is more important than image cleanliness. I'll admit I was surprised by how powerful Define was, given that it's not using machine learning. I thought that with non-AI denoising, the boat had sailed, but it turns out it's alive and kicking. The final plugin is the Nick Sharpner, which is split into a two-stage tool, one of which is designed to be used at the start of processing, and one of which is designed to be used at the end when you're exporting or printing the photo. In my testing, I found the pre-sharpener applied just about the right amount of detail sharpening. In comparison to the AI tools, the effect is quite understated, but that is no bad thing. Over-sharpened images look as bad as over-saturated ones. These enable you to tailor the sharpening according to the subject matter. Edge sharpening, for instance, is rarely used on skies because clouds don't tend to have sharp edges. DxO have made some meaningful changes in this point release of the Nick collection, but it may not be sufficient to interest anyone who already owns Nick 6 and is contemplating upgrading. The plugins are definitely a bit faster, but it's not a massive improvement. The U-point masking technology that DxO is persisting with in preference to things like AI masks is powerful, but you definitely need to work harder to get the selections you're after. The big difference in this version is that the masking tools have been upgraded to include elliptical, polygonal, and luminosity options, so you can create more targeted selections within each slider group. New in this edition is also a plugin switcher, which means you can transition your photo from one plugin to another in order to achieve the post-processing look you're after. Furthermore, if you use TIFF files for your editing, you can toggle a non-destructive edits box, which enables you to undo or edit settings you've made in any of the NIC7 plugins. If you're looking to grade your photograph, whether with a straight color grade, a retro film grade, or a black and white grade, then the NIC Collection 7 is a solid choice. Having used the NIC suite on and off for the last couple of decades, didn't expect some of the plugins to still be relevant, but I found myself pleasantly surprised. AI denoising is so good these days that it never occurred to me that there was a viable non-AI solution, and yet in my testing, I found a solid reason to use Define instead of an AI denoiser. For example, look at this photo processed in standard DxO D Prime using Pure Raw 4, and the same shot processed in Define with some salt sharpening applied. Our cowboy here clearly has some facial hair, which is evident in the shot processed in Define. But if we look at the same shot processed in Deep Prime, the app has clearly decided that facial hair is noise and has removed it. Analog FX is without doubt the most fun of all the plugins, enabling you to bring a classic film look to your photographs. It's not something I'd ever use for my landscape photography, but it's great for commercial work or, you know, Instagram. I'm not convinced there's any point to Vi Visa and feel the DxO should bite the bullet and simply leave it as a filter panel in color effects and not a separate plugin in its own right. The strongest two plugins in the collection are color effects and silver effects but they're weirdly different in terms of workflow. In color effects, you'd have a credible array of filter panels and tools that you bring to bear on any photograph to achieve a very specific color grade. But in silver effects, you have to start with a preset and then modify. It's a weird design choice, and simply stating that it's always been done that way is not really a valid answer. The sharpening plugin is nicely understated and proof, again, that you really don't need AI to achieve a tack sharp photograph. With this latest release of the Nick collection, DxO have made some decent changes to the suite and a modest speed bump. If you're an existing customer considering an upgrade, then your decision 
will likely rest on how much you need the new targeted masking tools. If you don't currently own the collection and you'd like to extend the capabilities of your post-processing app with extra tools, then download the 30-day trial version and see if it's something you'd actually use. And that'll do us for this review of Nick Collection 7 from DxO. Have you been using these plugins since the mid 90s? Or are they new to you? Let me know in the comments section below. A reminder, if you got value from this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.